Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, I'll be doing a review and how to play video on the card game Foul Play, so let's get into it. So Foul Play is a murder mystery card game where you take on the role of different detectives trying to crack the case and to be the first detective to find out who the murderer is. And so in this game, there's a couple different versions you can play. One, you'll act as a good cop. Others, you'll act as a bad cop doing whatever you can to find enough evidence to convict someone of the murder. But let's dive into how you play the game first so you have a better idea on how the game works. And then I'll jump into my review after that. All right, so Follow Play is a fast-paced card game that plays a lot like the card game version of Clue, where you play as detectives in Edwardian England, and the Lord of the Manor has just been murdered, and right now the prime suspects are the servants throughout the house. And so it's your job to play as either a good cop or a bad cop to uncover the evidence and determine who the murderer really is and solve the crime first. And so like I said, there's a couple ways to play the game. One is good cop, and in this scenario, there are three pieces of evidence that you need to uncover to solve the crime. So you need to find them all and track down the killer first to become the top detective. If you're playing bad cop, you don't really need solid evidence, just enough to implicate one of the suspects. And in this version, it's down to the first cop to uncover enough evidence to place a solid conviction. And so these are the different cards throughout the game that you'll be using. As you see, there's different character cards, there's different types of evidence, different cards that you can play to activate abilities. And then if you look at the back of the deck of the cards, you see there's different colors on each one of the backs of the cards. And so this could be important because again, all the A type evidence are blue, all the B type evidence are green, and the C type evidence are purple. So as you're looking through cards, you'll also notice that all the people cards are red. And then these cards could come in a different variety of colors as you play. So that can play into your strategy if you're looking for a certain type of card. It might be advantageous to know what color cards are what. So first we'll set up how to play the good cop version. So you start by finding the evidence cards first and you'll separate them into their respective decks of A, B, and C. You'll shuffle them up and you'll draw one from each pile. So one A, Shuffle the Bs, 1B, shuffle the Cs, and 1C. So now you've got your base evidence for the game. You can set the rest of the evidence off to the side as you won't use them in the good cop version. After that, you're going to shuffle all the rest of the cards together besides the other evidence cards to form the deck you'll use for the rest of the game. You can take these, shuffle them all up, Again, we shuffle this deck. And then we also put these evidence cards in where we don't know where they are. And we can continue to shuffle the deck after that as well. So they're thoroughly mixed throughout the deck. At this point, you're gonna set up nine cards in a three by three grid face down in the center of the table. And this forms your crime scene. Do not flip these up or look at these cards. At this point, you're going to deal five cards to each detective. And that's their starting hand. From here, you'll put the rest of the cards to the side, forming the evidence locker. You're also going to take one card from this pile and put it face down on the right side, forming the discard pile. Now the game is set up and you're ready to start playing the game and find the killer. So when it comes to a good cop version, how do you win? Well, to win the game, you need to discover the identity of the killer and be the first one to uncover the evidence cards, A, B, and C. And once you know who the killer is, you can attempt to solve the crime once you have that suspect card in your hand. So for example, this player knows that the killer wears a hat. So potentially it could be either of these guys that they have in their hand because they're both wearing a hat. So it might be advantageous to keep these cards in your hand as long as possible until you can find other evidence to eliminate them as suspects. So again, you need to know each aspect of evidence, A, B, and C, and then hold the specific character that matches all of those in your hand to make that accusation and win the game. 
So if you have that in your hand, what you can do is you can place the killer card face down and state that you have uncovered the truth. At this point, another detective could block you with a block card. So if they had one of these block cards, they could use that to stop you from uncovering the truth. If this happens, you'd have to put this back into your hand. Obviously don't discard your suspect card because you know that they're the person that committed the crime. And you'll basically have to wait until your next turn to try and solve the crime again. If no one blocks you at this point though, you must state the three pieces of evidence that brought you to the conclusion that this person is the killer. So you would need to say, for example, the killer wears a hat. Maybe they say the victim was shot so you know they have a gun and maybe you know that they were a man, for example, and that could identify Mort Throttle in this case. But again, you need to state the evidence as to why this person was the killer. If everyone else agrees with you, you found the killer and you win. However, someone can disagree with you, and if they do, you have to go through the deck and find all the evidence cards and either find out if you were right or if you made a mistake. If you're wrong, you're taken off the case and removed from the game, and your cards are shuffled back into the evidence locker, and every detective has seen your case file. So now they have all the evidence they need to determine who the real killer is and solve the crime. So at this point, it basically becomes a race of who can get that final killer in their hand and play it to win the game. Like I said, there's a bunch of different cards in the game and they each have their own unique ability. So block cards block people from doing whatever action they were attempting to do. Full cooperation forces all detectives to reveal their hands. Crime scene allows you to swap one of your cards from your hand for a card in the crime scene area. Foul play, you pick a detective and steal one of the cards from their hand. Fair play, you swap one of your cards with a card from another detective in their hand. Red herrings actually do nothing, and it's pretty much a useless card you can discard. And then interrogate, you get one detective to show you their hand. So when it comes to determining who plays first, it's the player that has the most red cards in their hand at the start of the game. If there's a tie, it goes to the older player. So again, this only has one red card, this has three, so this player will start first. So when it comes to playing your turn, it's actually pretty simple. You can either play a card or discard a card. So if you play a card from your hand, you simply place it face up in front of you and state your play. If no one blocks you, then you carry out the action that was listed on the card. So in this case, swap one of your cards from a card from the crime scene. So I've got the killer wears a hat. All of these players have a hat, so it's not ideal, but I could swap one of them out for one of the other cards. Once that action is complete, I discard the card that I played in the discard pile. And then I draw a new card from the evidence locker into my hand. Play would then pass to the next player. Another option is that I could discard a card. So if I had a card in my hand that I don't wanna play, I could discard one and pick a new card from the evidence locker. So for example, I've got a red herring card. This is useless, so I could discard that and draw a new one in hopes of a better card coming up. Also, if the evidence locker ever happens to be empty, you just simply take the discard pile and turn it into the new evidence locker. Also note that if a detective is down to one card in their hand, certain cards can't be played. So for example, the fair play and the crime scene where you need to swap cards are examples where this happens, and so you need to just discard them if you only have one card left in your hand. Also, if a detective has had all of their cards stolen, they're off the case and out of the game. Also note that you need at least two detectives in play to finish the game and solve the crime. So this is pretty much how you play the good cop setup. Now we'll just talk about the bad cop setup. So with the bad cop setup, it's a little bit different where you actually shuffle in all the cards within the deck into one big deck. So you put all of the evidence cards in together, A, Bs, and Cs, put it in the deck and shuffle it up to start the game. From that point, you also place nine cards out to form the crime scene grid. At this point though, you deal each player seven cards instead of five to begin the game. Player has seven cards, you then put the remaining cards next to the game. For the evidence locker pile, you'll put one card in the discard pile, and now the game is set and you're ready to start your investigation. So when it comes to winning bad cop, it's a little bit different than good cop. So in this version of the game, bad cop, you simply need to collect three pieces of evidence, A, B, and C, and this will identify a specific character 
within the deck. So in order to win, you need to have all three of these evidence cards in your hand and the matching character you want to accuse as the killer. So once you have these in your hand and the matching killer to win the game and make an accusation, you put the killer card face down. These evidences don't match up, but let's say they did. We'll take this one, we'll place it face down to make the accusation. You say that you've captured the killer. At this point, a detective could attempt to block you if they have a block card. If they do, you must also transfer your prime suspect into the hands of the blocker, and you're going to have to wait until your next turn to try and take your prime suspect back from the other player. Or you can attempt to get three more different types of evidence cards to try and find a new killer to charge for the crime. If no one blocks you, you reveal the three evidence cards you've collected and reveal the ki killer that matches those and then you've won the game. But if you happen to make a mistake and the evidence cards don't match your suspect, you're out of the game. Your cards are then shuffled back into the evidence locker and the investigation continues without you. The rest of the bad cop version of the game is played the exact same where on your turn you can either play a card or discard a card as you play. Now that you have a better idea on how to play foul play, let's jump into my review. Well, again, now that you guys see how the game plays, how do I feel about it? Well, the game itself, as you can see, it's pretty simple to learn and it's also really quick to play. You're probably looking at anywhere between 15 minutes to a half an hour, sometimes even less, depending on how the cards come up and what version of the game you play. As I said too, the game is pretty simplistic. On the box, it says 14 plus, but I think it's as long as you're comfortable with your kids playing a game about murder, you could probably play even lower ages than that because because it's simple to learn and easy to pick up. I kind of feel like the game is almost a combination of like Clue, Guess Who, and Monopoly Deal where they take kind of a traditional board game like Clue and then turn it into a card game where you're trying to find out who the murderer really is. And so I think that's great because the game is pretty accessible for players as, as again, it's not really that difficult to learn. I also like there's a couple different variants to it. So if you wanna play the good cop version or the bad cop version, it can add some more replay value into the game. Also, since the game is pretty short to play, you can play a couple rounds of it in a row or it gives you enough variety where you can play it multiple times and not really get sick of the game. Also, it's not super expensive, so that's cool. If you're looking for a quick, easy game to pick up, this could be a great one to add to your library. Some of the downsides I did notice with the game though is that depending on what cards come up, you might have a super fast game or a game that takes a really long time. But again, really long time is kind of relative, where again, most play sessions usually took around 30 minutes or less when we played it. Again, how the cards come up can really influence how the game plays out, where in some cases you might have one player that gets all the evidence cards right away or one or two of them right away, or again, very quickly within the game, and they end up winning the game before some other players might not have even seen an evidence card. And so it might not be as fun for those players depending on how the cards come up. Another thing that this game has is the ability to eliminate players. So when you're stealing cards, some players might, for example, gang up on other players, eliminating them from the game rather quickly. And then they basically need to just sit out and wait for the game to end at that point. And that might not be fun for some players. Or again, if you're playing with younger players, that might be frustrating for them. Again, I don't think it's a deal breaker by any means for the game. It's just how it's played but something to be aware of. If you're playing with younger players or maybe gamers that don't have a large attention span, that might be frustrating for them where they could be eliminated from the game early on. I think though, if you're looking for a simple card game to pick up and play, if you're fans of games like Clue, but maybe you don't want to have the time commitment or the setup commitment to playing a game like that, this could be a great alternate version to play as it's simple to learn, fast to set up, and it still gets the same kind of vibe of games like Clue. But let me know in the comments below if you think this game looks fun, if you're gonna pick up a copy, if there are other games like this that are fun card games that are easy to learn and play, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to pick up a copy of this game, there'll be links in the description below where you can do so. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into a, the live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.